Hey everyone, and welcome to the Canvas Horticulture Series. Today, we'll be talking about photosynthetically active radiation and how it affects your plant's growth. Photosynthetically active radiation, or PAR for short, describes the usable light that plants can absorb for photosynthesis. So basically, what parts of the light plants can eat to grow larger? Outdoors, the sun produces a mix of light wavelengths, each of which give off a different color and, when combined, looks white. However, plants can process some of these colors better than others, and PAR takes that into account to measure not just the light intensity, but the amount of light a plant can utilize based on the colors available. PAR only measures the spectrum of light visible to the human eye, which is between 400 and 700 nanometers. And you can see here which colors are the most optimal, with red being the most efficient, followed by blue and green. So for example, let's say that these carbs are the color blue, the meat is the color red, and vegetables are the color green. If you serve them in equal parts, the meat is still going to provide more calories than the carbs, which in turn will provide more calories than the vegetables. But that's not the end of it though, otherwise we'd all be using only red lights to grow a plant. Because based on numerous studies, it's been shown that every color can have their benefits outside of PAR. So while red light is the most efficient, it's been shown that blue lights help plants stay shorter in length, and green lights can penetrate a plant's canopy better, offering more growth below the top layer of a plant. This is the reason why growers are moving away from blurple lights. Because while blue and red lights can offer some of the highest PAR ratings, a full spectrum light just offers significantly better light quality for more even and vigorous growth. And now that we covered PAR, it's time to talk about just how much PAR a cannabis plant needs. And when you add the PAR together across the wavelengths, it's called a photosynthetic photon flux density, or PPFD, and this number is then measured in micromoles of photons per square feet per second. That sounds complex, but basically it's just the number that any PAR reader or PAR map will provide. So for example, let's take a PAR reading of this grow light. Here you can see the entire part reading in a chart format. And from this light, you can see the total PPFD measured in micromoles per square meter per second. And it also breaks down the PPFD into their color distributions. So you can gauge the overall light quality as well. And from these numbers, you can then tweak the light with more supplemental lighting if you want to boost any specific color spectrum. Note that the PAR range does not cover ultraviolet or infrared light. And while these two wavelengths do not really help feed the plant, they do provide other benefits that we'll go over another time. As for how much PAR a plant needs, we'll just be covering the basics here because this could vary based on other factors, such as the amount of CO2 in a grow space. But assuming you're not growing in a CO2 enriched environment, in the vegetative stage, you should be aiming for a PAR reading of between 250 to 500. And then in the flowering stage, you'll need to double that from 500 to 1000. Note that when you get past 750, you do start to get diminishing returns on the increase in growth rate versus the additional energy needed to power stronger lights. 
and when you get past 1000, the plant is pretty much capped off on additional growth unless more CO2 is introduced to the plant's environment. So yeah, the next time you're looking to purchase a grow light, be sure to check their PAR maps to see both what light will work best in your grow space and at what height it should be hung at in relation to your plant's canopy. And that's it. So if you like this video, check out our website at weedalepot.com for more cannabis time lapses, grow tutorials, processing guides, and product reviews.